Okay, um, I'm gonna go and get started. I'm waiting to see if anybody's gonna show up for kind of in person here, but um, uh, hopefully I've got my screen shared correctly. So uh, as usual, I'm gonna go over assignment six. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna keep it a lot shorter than our last class session um, if we don't have any more internet difficulties here. So, um, okay, yeah, I did finally have somebody join. Uh, is my audio okay? Just wanted to check that. So let me know if you can't hear me or not. Um, so my plan for today is, uh, I mean, just to go over assignment six and probably keep it shorter, hopefully, than last time. Although um, I wanted to show one or two things about assignment five, the one that we just completed on templates and um, um, operator overloading. So I was pretty happy. Uh, most people got, um, I think like six out of the eight or so people got um, the got to the task for and got work on the templates and stuff like that. So if you didn't, there were there is an example solution up here that I'm, I'm going to show here. So mainly, I wanted people to you know if you didn't quite get all of task four um, or didn't get to task four, uh, make sure that you do understand uh, template classes and how these work, right? Um, so template classes are a way that uh, it's used in other languages besides C++, but they're a way that we can define a class like a list class, but we can then um, um, use it in order to manage containers of different types, right? So without this kind of template mechanism, I would have to basically, oops, basically, um, like copy and paste all this code, but give like a different name. So like list of int, uh, where I use, where I define that the um, array is an array of, of ints, the value, the array called values is a, a array of ints, right? Uh, and if I want to have, you know, lists of uh, strings, which were the kind of two classes, I have to have like another name with a different name and, and use array of strings here, right? So the way I think of templates, um, and I'm, I'm repeating some of the stuff that hopefully you saw in the lecture videos for this week. Um, but yeah, the way I think of templates is just uh, it, it's a a way so we don't have to repeat ourselves, but then we can support having uh, containers of, of any kind of type inside of the container that we want. Okay. So in the other way, I mean, I think of this little boilerplate, this template here. This is kind of like a macro. So basically, by putting this on top here, anytime you refer to a T uh, here, um, it's this generic type T that's left unspecified, right? And so that when when you do a specific um, type, like if I want a, a, a list of integers, so a container, a list container that has um, keeps track of a list of integers, basically what what C plus the compiler does is it um, um, it makes a copy of all this code, but it replaces T with int, right? And then also, you know, the reason why we have to, the, the actual name of a templatized class is list T like this, because again, when it makes a copy of this code, it replaces that T with like the type, the the, the int type or, or the, the string type. If, um, you know, like, like in our other class, we were templatizing on lists of strings here, right? Um, so, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, that's the way I think about it, right? So, so, so really, kind of what's happening whenever you do that is it just makes a copy of all this code, replacing T with the specific type. So instead of you having to have multiple copies of like a list class for in, you know, with a slightly different name, it's doing that for you with this macro thing. Okay? So, and, and this is used in other languages. So Java has a similar concept for containers, and and you'll find this in other places as well. So. So anyway, this is the way that I normally templatize a class. I first just make a concrete instance, like a list of integers, um, like we did for tasks one through three for the assignment. And then I go back um, and uh, kind of remove everything, uh, turn into it. So to make it a template cache, you just have to put the template on top of this for the declaration of the class. And then everywhere that it was a list it has to become a list of T's, right? And then everywhere that... Um, um, whatever your concrete type was, you have to change that into this generic unspecified type T that I'm giving you in this assignment here, right? Um, 
so that's the main thing in templatizing this. So you, so you had to go through everything, everything that was a, like returning a list or taking um, a list as input becomes a list T, right? And every time we're passing in like a value that's supposed to be in the container, like an integer, like you had to do for steps one, task one through three, uh, that just becomes a generic type T, right? So, so now the append, prepend, um, and concatenate and the corresponding overloaded operators are passing in uh, T references, uh, T's instead of ints. Um, all right, and then, yeah, then for the actual implementations though, you have to add, it's crufty kind of in C++, you have to add a lot of boilerplate. So all these member functions are now gonna be templatized member functions. So all of them have to have that same kind of template boilerplate right before the function. And then everywhere that we have the, the name of the class list, the, the name of the class now is list T's, right? So you have to find, replace all those. So that, that's the main thing you have to do to templatize most of these functions. With then the other thing that anytime, you know, if, if you did tasks one through three, just using list of integers, once you templatize it, you have to find everything where it, the, the, the type was referring to. And so the, the size is not the container. I mean, the, the size is the size. That's the number of items in the list. but but the actual values that we're keeping track of in this container um, is now templatized on T. So we have to you know, change the type to the generic type. And you know, so when we dynamically allocate, instead of dynamically allocating an array of integers, we're just dynamically allocating some generic type T. And again, you know, if, if you think of it the way I do, so when C++ compiler makes a copy of this and fills this in with your type, like int, it's really just replacing all these T's with ints. So you get what you need, you get the, the new int to create, dynamically create an array of integers of the allocation size here. Um, all right, and then finally, I'll just real quickly show, you know, uh, I think most people got the append and the prepend. Some people still had some problems with the concatenate. Actually, some people are having some problems with the prepend too. So let me talk about that. So the append, kind of the simplest, um, approach is if you know that the allocated size of the values array is big enough to add a value, which the grow list, if needed, will guarantee. So after that, we know that there's at least room for one more value to be shoved into this values array, right? Um, so if you know that, um, uh, you know, again, if the size of the list is five, that means the valid indexes are zero to four. Right, so that means if I'm trying to append a new value, I actually want to put it at index five, and then I want to increase the size to six. So, so after that, uh, I've got six items, um, and they're in indexes zero to five, and I just appended that new item to index five before increasing. So we're kind of, I don't know if, if this is readable or not, but we're kind of using size in two ways. So it keeps track of the size of the list, but it also keeps track of the index that's one above the last valid index. So for the append, um, that's the location that we want to actually shove our new value into the values array. Um, and then, you know, right, so the, the one of the goals of this assignment was to learn more about operator overloading, right? So, I mean, these, again, this is kind of crufty syntax, but but what you understand what's going on here, we're, we're just using the same append function, uh, but we overload the operator. So, so it does the same thing to do an append, right? So I think I showed this um, um, when we talked about getting started on assignment um, five. So that means like in the second test case, um, or the third test case, where we actually overload the app, testing that you've correctly overload the operator, you can do things like that that syntactically looks as if L, the, the list is a built-in type that you can do streaming out, streaming at, or in this case, append and prepend operations on. And, and again, all, all the compiler is really doing for that is, is it really kind of converts that into a call to a function made operator, right arrow, right arrow. So that's kind of why these functions, these overloaded operators look the way that they do here. So, so that's just a, it's a name of a function, like a pen, but because of that special keyword operator and, and the particular operator 
um, it's a uh, indication to the compiler that um, um, you know whenever it sees um, things like that, convert it into that first, and then try and find a member function um, with that signature operator arrow arrow. Um, all right. Some people had a little bit more problem with prepend than what I would have expected. I'm pretty certain in the assignment description, I suggested, uh, ho hopefully this is true. So, so the, the, the easiest way to do this is to, to iterate backwards to the values array and shift everything up, right? So um, if my array, uh, again, if, if the list is size, uh, let's say five, that means that the valid indexes are zero to four. So if I start my index at five, and then I copy the one from five, the, the, the one minus that, so from four into five, that shifts the value or well, copies the value from index four to five. And then if we decrement index down to four, we'll copy from three to four, right? And then we have to be careful. So the, we want to stop when index is one because that'll copy the value from zero to one, right? And then after that, we basically shifted everything up by one. Um, so now, now we can safely overwrite what used to be in zero with the value that we're, we're trying to prepend, all right? Some, some people were doing something where they were swapping value. So going forward and basically taking the value out of index zero into a temporary variable. And then the second, Iteration of the lip list. Uh, I'm sorry of the um, of the um, loop. Um, copying the temporary value to index one, um, and saving the old well first saving the old value into a temporary location, then copying. Right, so, so it looks kind of like a swap, and, and you can get that to work. Although some people had some bugs on that, but. Um, <clears throat> All right. Now, like I said, I don't want to spend so. so um, and there's an example of concatenate. So concatenate is a little bit more complicated. But um, if you follow the suggested algorithm in the assignment, um, uh, we just create dynamically create um, an array of T's here in our templatized version. Um, and again, now, so you know, if you understand how to dynamically allocate like an array of integers, um, you know, all we've done when we templatized it was everything that was an integer to create a new array of integer dynamically becomes a generic type T, right? So we've got a new array of some type T that's unspecified. Um, and the result of that is going to be returning a pointer to the base address of an array of T's, right? So we get a pointer to a T as the result here. Um, So yeah, given that, I mean, so you can copy all the values from this instance uh, to the index of zero to size, and then you can copy all the values from the right-hand side, so RHS. Um, um, I've, 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 in the past, I've told you not to use abbreviations, so this is maybe not as me kind of, uh, you know, do what I say, not what I do, uh, but it is common to see RHS uh, in a lot of uh, um, templatized code like this. Um, or a lot of uh, overloaded operator code where, you know, so, so you know, uh, this list is going to be on the right hand side of when we're calling uh, the plus operator um, down here. Uh, let's find an example. So, So like when we do things like this, again, that gets converted into a call like L1 dot operator plus L2, right? So, so you know, it's shorthand that people call this sometimes the LHS, the left-hand side and the RHS, the right-hand side, right? So, so L2 is on the right-hand side of this expression and L1 uh, is the operator. So if we have a, uh, overloaded operator plus that just takes a single parameter. Um, the compiler assumes that what you want is to call an operator plus member function that takes a some single input parameter and returns the other value on the right hand, uh, passes in the other value on the right hand side to that operation, which is what you were supposed to do for this assignment um, here. All right. Um, so yeah, let me. I want to wrap that up. Any, any questions? Um, so. Um, Yeah, so um, there was one common, oh, uh, trying to templatize the um, concatenate. So, so, so there, there was a question here. I don't know if people watching this after the fact can see these chats or not easily. 
Um, but uh, I, I know some people were getting errors on the prepend uh, that were doing the swapping kind of thing because they tried to get the value at the size minus one. But whenever he tried to prepend onto a list that was already size zero, um, they were trying to access the, the values array at the index negative one. Um, I might have missed this for uh, for you, the, the student that was talking about that they were that you were getting a um, a problem in here. Uh, we can go look at. I'll probably have to look at that offline. But you know, again, most likely it's somewhere in here. It, you know, be careful that you're getting the size correct, and that that um, like when you're uh, um, putting the values uh, from the right hand side after the values that you already copied left hand side that you're correctly calculating the index here. So you're not going past the, in the um, uh, this dynamically allocated array. So um, um, I mean, so um, it, it shouldn't matter. The, the question is uh, that um, if you just called this something else, other or other lists. I mean, that shouldn't matter. Right? So, so that, that that shouldn't be the issue. So I could have changed my right hand side um, to just a, a different parameter name, and everything should have been fine. Um, all right, but yeah, I'll be happy to maybe to specifically look at that, um, um, kind of remind me in an email and I can go back and see if uh, uh, if that was happening on your most recent, your, your last commit on the assignment five. So, um, again, I've, I've said this, I've, I've kind of given hints before about if you're having, you know, memory issues where you're, where the program is crashing at runtime. So mostly, you know, when you're doing programs like this and data structures and you're starting to do dynamic memory allocation, uh, the 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 ninety percent of the time it's something where where you're going past the end the past the bounds of an array, um, and a good way a good first step to try and um, debug that is to actually run the tests where you use the dash s flag so that you see all the successful tests um, and then track it down to exactly which test seems to be causing the the runtime crash or the runtime uh, sig abort. So. Um, all right. So I do want to get started with the next assignments. So let's go ahead and, and start that then. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think um, uh, the, the, the student asking question here is, is um, 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 I th I'll, I'll go back and look at your repository. I think I kind of commented on that, although I think it was the prepend function. Um, um uh that i tracked it down to that was having an issue so i uh, have to check back in your comments on the repository for assignment five oh, okay um all right so let's let's um Talk about assignment six here. Um, I'll go through the usual steps. I still have people that aren't getting their auto formatter, um, you know, the, the code style checker formatter running on their code. So, you know, it is past time that you've gotten that figured out here. So, you know, I might stop grading assignments that aren't being run through the class style checker on assignment six. So you want to check that issue. I'll show that again here. So let's get um, not quiz, assignment six. Let's go ahead and accept it. To create our GitHub repository. Um, and we'll go through these steps again, so as usual, 
Um, we accepted the assignment. We'll go ahead and clone the repository for assignment six. Into our sync subdirectory. Um, it should successfully clone. So we can open up that folder with the repository. Um, and then um, our third step is to configure. Once you configure and assuming that your IntelliSense um, is correctly installed and running the version uh, 1.4.0, I believe for this class is what you should be running on that. Um, you should be able to do the full build system. So control shift one to do a make clean, control shift two to do a make all. Um, should build everything successfully with no compilation errors or no linking errors. And then if it builds okay, you should be able to run the tests. For this assignment, there are some tests already uncommented. So there's actually quite a few of them, 266 that should be passing before you do anything. Um, and you know your IntelliSense should be working. Um, so your code formatter should be running whenever you save. So, so if you type in a little bit of code like this, you should see IntelliSense telling you uh, that variables X and Y are defined, so the red squigglies kind of at a minimum. And if you do save, you should see that it re-indents your code. Um, so two spaces for each indentation level, puts white space around operators, uh, puts curly braces uh, on the line of their own, and so on. So this is all coming from the, um, um, the .clang format class style uh, file here, um, how, to, how to lay out the code. So. All right. Anyway, so make certain that all works. Um, and then, um, yeah, that's it. Oh, I guess create the first um, uh, task um, and then you're ready to go here. So I'll just create task one. Uh, as usual, I'm having some, uh, my network isn't great like it was last Monday. There we go. So we get started on test one. And go ahead and associate it with our um, feedback pull request here. So. Uh, I don't think we don't have any more assignments where you have to create branches or anything like that. So this was a, the, the last assignment we just completed was a little bit unusual for the task four, uh, just because I wanted to um, try and get you to have the work to actually templatize the function be on a separate branch than the, than the main feedback branch. So, um, but yeah, so uh, as usual for this one, we'll back to just using a feedback branch and a feedback pull request for everything. So. Um, All right, so for this assignment, uh, we're going to be um, still, we're still back to working with our um, list class. So we're going to be implementing some member functions for list class, but um, pretty much like most of the stuff you've been doing so far, we've been the, the, the behind the scenes for the list class, it was using a, a array, so, so a, a block of memory that was dynamically allocated. Um, and it managed that that array by, you know, it kept track of if the array was full and if it was, it would um, grow it. So it would allocate a new array of bigger size and copy all the old values from the old array to the new array, right? So there's advantages and disadvantages, you know, so um, um, for the list that we just finished for assignment five, uh, whenever you want to append or preprint an item, um, it's it's a constant time operation as long as the allocated size is big enough to hold one more item, right? But as soon as the the array becomes full, uh, the the allocation current allocation is full, 
um, the, the prepend or the append operations uh, become more expensive, become an ON operation. Um, you have to first allocate a new array, like doubling the size, you're making it bigger. And then the, the, the in, the, the ON comes from having to copy all the values from the old uh, array memory to the new array memory, right? So if I have in values in the old array, I have to copy all those. Um, so um, a common alternative for data structures like, like lists and stacks and queues that we'll be looking at uh, uh, next week is to use a linked list instead of an array, right? So for a linked list, uh, every time you want to append or prepend an item, uh, what you do is you create a new uh, instance of a node and you just link it to a dy dynamically linked list structure. Um, instead of using um, a, a block of memory as an array, okay? So this has the advantage for like prepend and append that those operations will always be constant time um, because, uh, uh, because you're dynamically growing by one node your linked list every time you want to prepend or append an item, right? Um, but there are trade-offs. I think I probably talked about this in the lecture video, um, you know, so if you want to uh, get a particular item in the middle of your list. Um, if you have an array, you can just index it. And it's a constant time operation to uh, get an item from the middle. But if it's a linked list, if you want to get an item in a particular position, you'd have to iterate. You'd have to start at the beginning of the list, if it's a, if it's a singly linked list, um, and iterate down to the node of the position that you want to, if, if, to implement like a, an indexing operator, right? Um, so we are kind of doing what we just did uh, for our list class last time, but um, we are going to uh, implement um, the uh, data structure behind the scenes of our list using a linked list. And we're going to focus on, on that in this class, okay? So um, um, let me mention some things. So, so there's some more kind of uh, C++ object-oriented concepts and programming in this. So now if you look at the class um, uh, or, or all the files in the class here and the include and the um, source subdirectory, uh, there's quite a few more that there's like a list. Um, uh, we, we can mostly ignore the iterator and the exceptions and stuff like that, but there's like a list class, but there's also an A list and an L list. All right. So we're using a concept here and going forward, uh, we're using um, object-oriented inheritance to define a class hierarchy. So we've actually got a base class called list um, in this assignment uh, that's, that, that is templatized. So, so it's already templatized to begin with. But, but this class, if you look at it, uh, and you might want to read C++ about um, 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 parent classes and child classes are basically object-oriented um, 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 design concepts in C++. So here, our base class, most of the, a lot of the functions are declared virtual. So, so these, these are really kind of just abstract functions. These aren't actually implemented. So, so really, the, the list class, what I call this base class here, is just defining an interface. And from it, we're going to derive uh, actual concrete implementations of this list abstraction. So a list uh, now in assignment six, we should be able to do things like uh, clear the list, delete the back item, delete the front item, uh, and you're gonna be implementing these. So insert an item on the back of the list, uh, insert an item on the front of the list with the corresponding over, overload operators. This is really the same as the append and the prepend uh, that we did um, in the previous assignment. Uh, delete a value from the list, um, delete a value at a particular location in the list, so delete the value at a particular index, and so on, right? Uh, so this defines like an interface, uh, but we want to actually implement uh, concretely in two ways. So uh, you're going to be implementing, filling in and implementing uh, a linked list version. There's a there's an already implemented version that uses an array, uh, which is in the A list at HPP. Um, and, and and I'll bring up the implementations of these, but you'll see that like the insert back and insert front 
are pretty much like, are basically the same as the append and prepend that you just completed for the array base. Okay, so the array base list uh, inherits from list. So array base list is a template class. It, it inherits from the base class list t. So so that means a list is a list. Um, but uh, these functions are not virtual anymore because it actually has implementations of insert back, uh, insert front, delete front, delete back, and so on, right? Which which means if you look at the um, the the a list at cpp, uh, you can find the implementations of all of the of the, the concrete implementations for the array based list class. Um, in particular, um, like I was saying, so let's just real quickly look at um, um, like um, insert back. Insert back is like appending um, onto the end of the list, right? So if, if you got your append working, you should see that this is basically the same, this is basically the same as the append that I just posted a solution for. So, so to append or insert on the back of the array based list, we um, whatever the current size is, we, we uh, just after we're certain that the list is the array is big enough to get one more value on there. Um, we just put that value at the back there um, and then increment size by one. Um, and we overload the operator uh, for appending the same way that we did the previous assignment. Um, and we've also got like a, do we have an insert front? So we had like an insert front, um, which is basically like the prepend. So here, um, like the solution I just showed, we, we basically shift all the items up uh, by iterating backwards through the array and then put the value at index zero, all right? So the, the, uh, the, the, in short though, the A list is basically what you just completed if you got through all four tasks with a few extra things um, like uh, delete back and delete front and some things like that. So how would you delete an item off the, the back of an array based list? Well, relatively simple. Um, I mean, assuming that the list isn't already empty, if it's not empty, if you just reduce the size by one, uh, basically that, you know, so if I had five values, the, the, the valid indexes were from zero to four. If I want to delete the item at index four, I just decrease the size by one. Now the valid index, now the size is four and the valid index is from zero to three. I mean, you don't, you don't have to do anything to erase the item out of that index uh, that we just um, kind of removed because the next time you insert an item, it'll just overwrite the value, right? So it's still in there, but it's kind of garbage. It's not really part of the list anymore, right? Whereas if you want to delete from the front, it's a little bit more complicated for an array-based uh, list because basically you want to just shift all the values again. So sort of, sort of like um, 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 prepending the front, if you want to delete the front item, uh, I want to shift everything back down by one location, um, which is all the loop does here for the delete front. All right. Um, anyway, uh, you might find it useful. Uh, so you're going to be implementing um, some of these functions for the Ellis class, uh, the signatures are going to be exactly the same, except they're going to be members of the Ellis instead of the A list. Okay, so let, let's let's get started with the task one uh, there then. So um, um, we want to in implement the insert back um, and then overload the uh, that operator to do uh, insertion at the end of our linked list version here. All right. Um, So you're actually going to be doing things in the um, uh, for the tests. Uh, the, the the ones that you need to implement are, that are commented out are in the test L list because we're adding member functions to the linked list version of our list container class here. So as usual, we'll start by uncommenting. I'll just un there's there's two test uh, um, cases like before, where the first one is just uh, calling the insert back, and then the second one is then seeing if you got that. Um, um, the overloaded operator uh, implemented, um, I believe. So anyway, all right, we'll, we'll get there. So for the, uh, so if you uncomment that, um, um, it won't build anymore because um, 
Um, we are trying to use this insert back function on that. So here we've got an L list of integers um, that we're trying to insert back on. We haven't implemented it. Um, so really, like, kind of like I was saying, um, if we want to uh, implement the insert back, you basically have the same signature as what you'll find in your a list.hpp. You'll also have the same signature as in the base class. And, um, another thing that's mentioned in the assignment instructions, you should also uncomment these virtual things from the base class, uh, the, the, the declarations, right? Um, so, so this is the declaration that all things that inherit from list should have an insert back method that takes uh, a, a constant reference to a T as input. Um, and returns uh, a reference to a list of T's as output, right? Um, which is what we're doing here. So, so for the concrete implementation, uh, you don't have that virtual equals zero in C++. You just have all the other information. But so we basically need the same thing to do the insert back um, in our LList header. So we'll open up the LList header file. Um, and um, I'm going to put these in the same location, so I'll put it after the clear uh, here. All right. Um, and uh, yeah, that's correct here. Uh, and that should allow the, the compiler to be happy to compile the test L list, because I've now declared I've got um, somebody's going to implement this function called insert back for my L list class now. Let's try, um, but we haven't implemented it yet. So uh, when it tries to go to link, it'll find that there's no implementation yet. Um, so we should get some link errors about undefined reference to L lists insert back function here. So um, um, instead of writing my documentation by hand, I'm actually gonna copy the uh, the insert backs version from the A list here to get started uh, with my insert back. So let's go to A list insert back. So my implementation will be different. I'm just gonna, as usual, I'm just gonna do a stub function uh, for this insert back. We're trying to get into our um, link list version um, of the, the L list here. So, so we we'll put our stub function for the insert back after the clear function um, um, in the same location where we declared it. Um, and we'll check our documentation. So, you know, the, the only thing that should be different here is, is um, we are now implementing insert back for the L list, the, the link list version of our list class. So everything else should be the same. And um, um, uh, for a stub function here, this returns a reference to a T. So I could just create an empty T. This is like calling a, a, an empty constructor. Um, on some type T, so um, so that works you know, uh, even for basic types like ints and floats and things like that. So. Um, so um, uh, as usual, you know. Uh, I copied all the documentation, but we should make certain that it's still valid here. So this, this method will grow the list allocation if needed. Uh, so that doesn't make any sense anymore. I'll start with that sentence. So, um, so this method uh, will create a new node and append the new and um, set the value for the node to be indicated value and append this new node to our linked list uh, for this class. Right. Uh, but yeah, value is still the value that we want to append to the end of the current list. 
Um, and um, as we're doing before, we are returning a reference to this. Uh, so I had that wrong. Yeah, so uh, I want to return a, a, a list, not a T. So, so I did have that wrong there. So, uh, but we're going to be doing the same thing um, um, that we, we return back ourselves, a reference to ourselves um, uh, here, so we can chain um, our operators. So. Um, all right, so that should be enough to uh, compile it and let it run the tests. Uh, but we should be uh, failing our test because we just stubbed it out. So, for example, we're failing our first test on line 42 because um, after uh, it does fine uh, when, when the a list is initially empty, but after we insert our first item, we expect that the size should be one um, and our size isn't um, one there yet. So, um, So uh, if you watch the lecture videos here, what, what we're doing now, instead of using an array, uh, we're going to be maintaining uh, a linked list. So if, if you look in the, um, the header file for the linked list um, class, uh, look at the private member variables. We don't have the array of values um, and the size. Uh, we've, instead, we've got a pointer to the front node and a pointer to the back node. Uh, of our linked list. Oh, and we're using node instances. Okay, so that's another class that's already given for you. Um, you can look that up. So like you can look in the header for the node.hpp. So uh, nodes are basically just a structure, actually. So we're not even using a class. We're just using um, a regular structure where we've got um, a, a value and a pointer to the next node. Um, so we can create and maintain linked lists of, of these node instances. So, um, yeah, and in this case, um, uh, we don't actually even have any member functions or things. So we're going to be directly accessing the member uh, variables of the nodes that we create. All right. So, um, so I'll, I'll pretty much give you kind of the implementation of the task one here for the most part. So we basically need to create a new node and initialize the values of the node, right? We do need to dynamically create the new node here. Um, oh, I should have mentioned that um, um, it's a good idea, for example, to look at the constructor. So for example, the, the constructor for the linked list um, for, for the, the default one, if the list is empty, is, is we if, if the list is empty, the, the front pointer and the back pointer should always be pointing to the null pointer. So that's how we indicate that there's no, and, and size should be zero. So that's how we indicate that there's um, um, nothing in the list, right? Um, so, So we want to, uh, the first step that was talked about in the assignment was we want to create a new node dynamically um, and initialize its member variables um, as needed. So, um, um, so if we, if we're, if we're going to dynamically create a new node, we're going to end up getting a pointer to a, a node of T's return for us. Um, so, so that would actually create uh, dynamically a new instance of a node of T and return a pointer to it, right? So now we have that, this is a pointer to the, the node class that we talked about. So it's a pointer to one of these templatized on type T. So, so we need to set the, the member variable. So um, so 
So we might do something like that. So until we insert this node into the, uh, actually when we're inserting down the back, this is going to become our new node at the back of the linked list. So um, um, uh, the, the, the last node on a linked list, its next pointer should always be pointing to null. So that, that's the correct initialization that we want to do here uh, in anticipation that this node is going to be the, the last node of our linked list that we're maintaining in our data structure here, right? Um, so, There's kind of two special cases. If the list is currently empty, that new node becomes both the front um, and the back uh, of the list, uh, and the size of the list should become one. In both cases, uh, the size of the list should be incremented by one um, after we insert this new item at the back of the list here. Um, so if it's empty, because if it's if the list, um, oh yeah, if the list is empty, then both the front and the back should be pointed to this new node. So it's both the front and back node. If it's not empty, then we are going to simply append it. So uh, in that case, uh, back points to the current back node. So whatever the, the back node is, we want to point its next pointer, which should be null, to this new node that we created, um, and then set back to be our new node, if that makes sense. All right. Uh, and you should reuse the is empty um, member function. So is empty, that, that's the only thing that is implemented in the base class definition for the list.hpp. So if you go back and look at your list.hpp base class, um, there are, well, there are some other things that are implemented, um, but there is, this is empty and get size. Um, so in particular, uh, even though we're using linked lists, all of, for efficiency reasons, uh, all the things that derive from this list base class need to keep track of the actual si current number of items, so the size of the list collection. Um, and uh, we, the, the basic way that we're going to test if something is empty or not is whenever the size is zero, that means that the list is currently empty. Uh, so that's what we're doing here. So, um, so, um, if the list is empty, pin the new node to back of current linked list, right? Um, a note about this, um, I think this is described in the assignment description that there's, this, again, this is a little bit of some truftiness from C++. Um, because we're inheriting from template classes, um, it probably won't know what you mean by is empty since it's actually uh, implemented in the base class, even though is empty, you know, so, so my L list is a list since it uh, inherits from the list base class. So um, is empty should be a member function of my L list since it's, it's declared by my parent class. Uh, and implemented by the parent class. But uh, the compiler, uh, let's see if this is true, um, um, might not be able to figure out um, um, where the is empty is defined for you. Um, um, and again, this isn't normally the case if you're using inheritance for non-template classes, but this is a little bit of something. Um, I don't know if this is going to be fixed in the next version of C++ or not. Um, but um, uh, anyway, um, there's two ways to fix this. So if you explicitly say, look in the list base class for the is empty function, um, or you can say, oh, this is a member function of, of this, uh, I think both of those will fix it. So um, uh, this will allow the compiler to know this is supposed to be a member function of of the L list class, um, and L list is a is derived from the list class. Um, so it'll be able to find it um, in uh, either case there. So so anyone, anytime you want to use the is empty or want to refer to the size, those are actually declared in the list base class. So you'll probably have to prepend it with this or use the list colon colon in front of it.
but that should make the compiler happier if I remember right. Yeah, so it compiles if you do it like that. Um, but we're still not passing our test because we're still not actually implementing that. So um, as we started saying here, uh, if it's empty, uh, the, the new node should become the new back node, right? So, so the current back node, uh, back is a pointer to a node. So instead of having the, the back node pointing to null pointer, uh, it needs to be repointed to this new node. We're trying to make the new back, right? And then we need to move back to now be pointing to that new back node, right? An even more explicit name for this might be new back node. Although, well, yeah, if the list is empty, this becomes both the, the new front and back node, so. Um, so, so we do need to increment the size. So again, um, um, size is declared uh, in the base class. So if you just refer to something called size, um, uh, you'll probably get a compiler error. So if you disambiguate using this or the list colon colon, um, it should find it, right? Uh, and with that, we should be passing uh, some tests now. Um, so oh, we had a segmentation violation there. So um, hmm, let's debug that there. What did I do wrong? So um, so here, a uh, good example of you know causing a crash. Um, uh, I know that it's this code that I just added um, that must be doing it. Um, I'll see what I have in this. Surely that's okay. That should just be fine to increment the size. Okay, so at least it's not crashing there. Um, and um, uh, we actually do get past the, the first test here um, because we are returning back a size of one. Um, and also the list is no longer coming up as empty, uh, but we, we failed that there because we didn't actually get the value uh, five inserted on the back of the, the end of the list there. So. Um, oh, I know why that crashed because, uh, of course, um, um, I should have done I should have done the other case first because the list is initially empty. So um, um, oh, um, yeah, so I did the wrong thing here. So the, the list is empty. So, so if the list is empty, um, I should have done the other thing. I, I was doing the case when the list was not empty. Um, so if the list is empty, we really want to uh, make this uh, node the both the front and the back. Which is really what I, so it was crashing because uh, back um, is actually null when it's empty. So when you try to dereference a null pointer, uh, you'll get a crash. Uh, so uh, now that uh, instead of using arrays, a common thing is anytime you try to dereference a pointer that's a null pointer, that will cause a runtime crash. So that, that's a common thing when you start working with linked lists that will cause uh, crashes like the one that I just saw here. So 
Um, so that was what I actually meant to do. So front and back when it was empty uh, are both pointing to null, but now when we got a single node, front and back should both be pointing to that new node that we just created. And uh, that should hopefully allow us to pass the tests where we insert into an empty list to get a list of size one. So now our first failing test is line 50. So that means, you know, we got past all these. Uh, we actually uh, had our list with size five in there correctly coming out. We inserted on seven, the size was still right. Um, and, and it's, uh, false. It's not true that the list is empty, but you know, again, uh, now we're not correctly inserting on on a non-empty list. So, just to finish that up, um, otherwise the list is not empty. So, make this new node, the new back node of the current linked list. So in that case, you know, so we already set the, the next pointer for the new back node to be null pointer, which will work for both cases here. Uh, but but um, uh, this was the code I had before. So, so here, if the list is an empty back should be pointing to a valid node. So, so backs next, we want to uh, not be null, but we want to point to the new back node that we're just creating, trying to get to the end of our linked list. Um, now, and then we want to repoint back um, to this new node that's now our uh, back node of the, uh, uh, of the linked list there. So, So, so yeah, that actually ends up passing the tests for um, that I uncommented uh, in the first test case here. So, um, so yeah, so then the the next one is then um, testing the overload operator which, you know, um, should be um, relatively straightforward. Uh, this will be pretty much the same as what most everybody did uh, for the previous assignment here. Um, although again, in this case, you know, just to go quickly, um, you know, we're gonna have exactly the same signature for the operator output, um, the, the append operator, insert back operator, I'll call it now. Um, And uh, oh, and in fact, the implementation is going to end up being the same uh, since we're just reusing the implementation of insert back. So, so the only difference being um, that uh, this is now our operator defined for our LS class. Um, but yeah, that is probably pretty much the task one for you all. Uh, but I did want to show task one because I want to make certain everybody knows, you know, the, the basic idea of, of what we need to be doing for this linked list, which comes down to, you know, dynamically creating nodes and setting the values of nodes and then dynamically inserting or removing it uh, inside the list. So to the front or the back, or maybe searching through the current list, linked list to find the position of a particular node. Um, and removing that node from the middle of the list. Um, so those, those are the rest of the operations that you're gonna end up doing 
um, on this assignment here. So, uh, so let's see here. So yeah, not passing all the tests like it was maybe expected it to actually. Let's see, line eighty five. Uh, oh, yeah, there's probably one more thing. Um, the uh, the constructor um, for um, for the L list is going to be reusing your insert back to implement uh, the constructor to construct a, a list um, from an array of values. So uh, so yeah, once you get to that this point. Um, I'm sure this is described in the assignment, but, it, but if you go back and look at that constructor, uh, this constructing from, not from a list, but from an array. Um, there was a little uncommon out because, you know, uh, we wanted to, so it's more difficult for a linked list version to create nodes and things. So we didn't want to repeat the, the, the code for creating new nodes. We just want to reuse the insert back method uh, in this constructor to, to take all the values one by one from the array as input uh, and construct a linked list from the values. So that's how we do that. And uh, I can't remember, there might be more um, uncommon. It might be the only one, but uh, but we can do a search for um, see if there's any other uh, calls to insert back here in constructors. Uh, yeah, there, so there's another one. Oh yeah, on the list-based constructor as well, uh, it does kind of the same thing where it iterates over the values in the list um, and inserts all those values from the list um, uh, into this list. So. so that should be it. So, so you wanna uncomment those two calls to insert back. Uh, once you get your uh, insert back uh, implemented, um, and then you should be able to pass the first two uh, uh, test case in the uh, test L list here. Um, there we go. All right. Um, and I spent a lot of time on task one because. Um, um, so I'm just going to describe the others. So as long as you kind of get the hang of, you know, what we're doing here with the linked list and stuff, how to create a new node that I just showed you, um, uh, task two and three. Um, so task three is to insert on front uh, and, and overload the operator. So that's going to be pretty similar to task one. Um, uh, in fact, this will be easier than doing the uh, pre-pinned uh, because you know you create a new node like we just did, but uh, it becomes the new front node instead of the new back node. So, um, so oh, um, I forgot to mention you should uh, you shouldn't increment size also for the insert front. Looks like I missed that, like I didn't uh, until the um, as a third step on the first task there. Um, so the get front and the get back should be relatively trivial. Um, so for example, for the um, ar the array based list, um, all, all these we want these. Hopefully, these will be constant time operations. So, so whatever the item is that's on the front of the linked list, um, it should return the item from the front. Whatever the item is at the back of the linked list, it should return the item from the back. So for the array-based version of the linked list, um, you know, these are pretty trivial. Um, um, the get front is the item at index zero. So we just return that uh, and get back. We can we can figure out from whatever the current size is. So the, the that last valid index will be the current size minus one. So that's the get back. Uh, the only wrinkle on these is that you're supposed to be a little bit defensive so that if somebody asks to get the front item for an empty list, uh, it throws out a, a list empty exception instead. But, you know, you can basically, again, like I showed um, for the task one, you can copy pretty much all of this, including the exception will be pretty much the same, except, you know, try and change the name there. It should be L list instead of A list uh, that we're getting the exception from. Um, 
but yeah, so the exceptions will be pretty much the same. Uh, the only difference will be the implementation. So for the linkless based version, you've got the front and the back pointers. So you just want to access the, the front pointer to get the value um, for the get front and the back pointer to get the um, back value for get back. So yeah, hopefully, I mean, you know, now I've gotten you started, I hope everybody can get through two and three relatively quickly if you follow what I just did for task one. Uh, four and five will be more um, involved then. Um, so four is supposed to be where you give it a particular index number and it removes that item. So instead of uh, deleting the item, the front item or the back item, which are both constant time um, for, um, well, uh, let, me, let me talk a little bit about this, although it's already past three here, but um, like, 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 if you want to delete the front item from an array-based linked list, um, um, you know, if you want to delete the back item from an array-based array -based linked list, uh, that's a constant time because you can just, you know, uh, decrement the um, um, size by one, right? And I think we showed that to you because we have um, delete front and delete back um, operators uh, as part of the um, um, as part of the API uh, for this here. So the uh, the delete back is 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 a constant time. Uh, it also have to do is decrease the size by one. But delete front um, is um, we've got delete front, don't we? Yeah, delete front though is a big O of N um, for an array based because you have to do all the shifting, right? So if I want to remove the item out of index zero. Um, I have to shift everything down by one and then decrease the size by one. So, so because of this loop that goes from zero to size or zero to n, it's a big O of n operation to uh, delete the front. But think of your, so, so here's where the linked list based version um, is, uh, has better performance than the array base. So delete front and delete back for the, um, delete front for the linked list version um, is trivial because all you have to do is remove the, the, the node pointed to by front and repoint front to the next node, right? Um, but actually now that I think about delete back though, uh, which I think um, it was already implemented for you um, for the linked list version um, is not. So so uh, so yeah, you, you already had these, delete front and delete back. Um, so like uh, delete front um, for linked list version is, is a constant time. Um, so all you do is um, um, move front to be, move it to the next item. So now front is pointing to the second item in the current link list. And then you delete the, the node that was at the front. So you free up its memory, right? But unfortunately for delete back, if for a singly linked list, back is pointing to the node that you want to delete, uh, but you need really a pointer to the node before the back node to correctly uh, repoint your back pointer. So you end up having to search um, all the way the list to all the way down to the node one before the back node. Uh, uh, so you end up with a, a O of N time again, but for delete back this time instead of delete front for the linked list version. So, um, anyway. Uh, delete index, uh, you know, kind of as a hint, is going to be kind of similar to the the delete back, but instead of uh, iterating down until you get to the second to last node, you need to iterate down some constant number of times. Or you might even be able to use a for loop, right? So starting at front, um, if you want to delete the 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 fifth node, um, um, we would have to iterate five times so that we're pointing to the fifth node and delete that node. Um, from the list there. Um, it's a little bit more complex than that. So, to, so when you're deleting a node from the middle of the linked list, you have to have a pointer both to the node before you, the one you want to remove and the node that you want to remove. Or, or uh, the easiest solution is to, is to get a pointer to the node before the one that you're trying to remove for the delete index and the delete value. Because if, if you have the, the pointer to the node before the one you want to remove, uh, <coughs> You could just repoint um, um, that next pointer 
to its next next, if that makes sense, right? So, so you have all the information you need to repoint the, the node around that and then uh, to then call delete um, on the node uh, that needs to be removed there. Um, um, and then finally, delete value uh, um, um, will be the most difficult. So what you need to do for this is instead of giving a particular index, uh, you're given a value that you need to search for. Uh, so you need to um, search the linked list uh, until you find a node that has the value and um, uh, then remove that node uh, from the linked list. Right? Uh, and uh, the 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 complexity comes from you're supposed to actually remove all the values from the list. So, so it could be possible that, that the list has more than one of that value that you're being asked to remove. So, you know, if the list has uh, uh, three instances of that values in the list, you need to remove all three of those values um, from the list. So if that doesn't make sense, you know, look, look at the tests. Um, Uh, might help a little bit. So, um, so we're, we're testing deleting the front values, testing deleting the back values, test deleting value of particular index, test deletion values from the list. So, for example, here, if we say, um, uh, if we have a list with Charlie Delta, Charlie Delta, list of strings with those uh, four values, and we ask to delete Delta, um, the resulting list, uh, we need to find all of those instances uh, and remove that from the linked list. So we end up with just going from a list of size four to a list of size two in that case, Charlie, Charlie in there. All right, um, yeah, so that's all I wanted to kind of cover um, on this assignment. You know, hopefully everybody can get the first three tasks um, relatively quickly and then get working on the um, uh, task four and five. So uh, any kind of uh, other questions about this assignment here before I post this? Um, if not, I'm going to go ahead and end the session and we'll get this posted then for those that are watching this um, asynchronously. Um, yep, keep sending emails. Uh, I'll see you guys later then.